In this video, you'll learn a shortcut method for solving elastic collision problems with two unknown variables. We'll begin with this problem. Object 1 is 2 kilograms and moving towards the right at 5 meters per second. In front of object 1 is object 2, which has a mass of 1 kilogram and moving to the right at 2 meters per second. After object 1 bumps into object 2, what are the velocities? Since momentum and kinetic energy are conserved in an elastic collision, the straightforward method is to use these equations. However, the algebra is very tedious and it's very easy to make a mistake. Instead, we'll be using the center of mass reference frame to solve our problem. Momentum is mass times velocity. So before the collision, object one has a momentum of two times five, which is 10 kilograms meters per second. Object two has a momentum of one times two, which is two kilograms meters per second. So the total momentum before the collision is 12 kilograms meters per second. Using this, we can calculate the center of mass velocity, which is equal to the sum of the momentum divided by the total mass. The sum of the momentum is 12 kilograms meters per second, and the total mass is two plus one, which is three kilograms. So we have a 12 divided by three of four meters per second, which is the velocity of the center of mass. So imagine that you're moving at four meters per second to the right and watching these two objects collide. From your center of mass reference frame, object one would appear to be moving at one meter per second because you're moving at four meters per second to the right. And object two would appear to be moving at two meters per second to the left towards you because you're moving faster to the right. When the two objects collide in the center of mass reference frame, both momentum and kinetic energy have to be conserved. When we calculate their momentum in the center of mass reference frame, we find that object one has a momentum of two kilogram meters per second, and object two has a momentum of negative two kilograms meters per second. So the total or net momentum here is zero. And when we calculate their kinetic energies, we find that object one has a kinetic energy of one joule, and object two has a kinetic energy of two joules, and their total kinetic energy is three joules. So now we need to figure out what velocities these objects can have after the collision so that momentum is conserved and that kinetic energy is also conserved. If we were to have both velocities, momentum would be conserved. However, the kinetic energy would not. If we were to double both velocities, momentum would be conserved, but the kinetic energy would not. So the only solution we can have is to reverse the direction of the velocity. So object one has a velocity of one meter per second to the left, and object two has a velocity of two meters per second to the right. By keeping the magnitude of the velocity the same and just switching the directions, this ensures that the momentum is equal to zero, the total momentum is equal to zero, and that the total kinetic energy um, continues to be three joules. This, however, is not our solution because we still need to transform back to the laboratory frame of reference. To do this, we're going to add our velocity to the center of mass velocity. In the center of mass, object one is moving to the left one meter per second. However, our center of mass velocity is four meters per second to the right. If we add these two together, because they're in opposite direction, we're gonna subtract, we get three meters per second. In object two, since it's moving to the right in the center of mass reference frame and the center of mass velocity is four meters per second, two plus four, we get six meters per second. So in the laboratory frame of reference, object one is moving to the right at three meters per second. Object two is moving to the right at six meters per second. We can also check to see that momentum and kinetic energy is conserved. Both before and after the collision, the total momentum is 12 kilograms meters per second, and the total kinetic energy is 27 joules. So let's see if we can derive an equation that lets us use the center of mass velocity to calculate the final velocities of the two object. The first thing to note is that to get object one's initial velocity in the center of mass reference frame, which we'll call u, we need to subtract vcm from v1. 
So we get u is equal to v1 minus vcm. We can re write this as v1 is equal to u plus vcm. Then to transform object one's final velocity, which is negative u, back to the laboratory frame of reference, we need to add vcm to minus u. So we have v1 prime is equal to negative u plus vcm. If we combine these two equations, we get v1 plus v1 prime is equal to, and notice the u's cancel out, and we get 2vcm. And now, if we're looking for v1 prime, which is the velocity of the of object 1 after the collision in the laboratory frame of reference, it's just 2vcm minus v1. And for object 2, it's going to be very similar. V2 prime equals 2 VCM minus V2. So here we have our equation, shortcut equation, for figuring out their velocities after the collision. So now I'm going to show you how we can use the equations we just derived to find the velocities of the objects after an elastic collision. So first we're going to calculate the center of mass velocity. And to do that, we're going to find the sum of the momentum before the collision. In this case, it's 12 kilograms meters per second. And the total mass is 2 plus 1 is 3 kilogram. So the center mass velocity is 12 divided by 3, which we get 4 meters per second. Bracket that. We'll be using that next. Then to find the final velocity of object 1, we're going to take 2 times the center of mass velocity, which is 4, minus v1, which is 5. So 8 minus 5, we get 3 meters per second. And then object 2's final velocity is 2 times the center of mass velocity, which is 4, minus the initial v2 velocity, which is 2 meters per second. So 8 minus 2 is 6 meters per second. And that's it. Just took us three lines of simple math to calculate their velocities after an elastic collision.